Hey everybody, welcome to Peppermint and Tobacco, a YouTube channel all about home fragrance. We spend a lot of time talking about candles, but today we're going to talk about recipes. I'm going to share with you my favorite gazpacho recipe, so stay tuned. Thanks everybody for coming on back. If you're new to the channel, normally Peppermint and Tobacco is about home fragrance and candles, and I guess this could be home fragrance. It's going to smell yummy in your tummy. But today I'm going to share with you my favorite gazpacho recipe. So we're at the very tail end of summer. So it's the last couple of days of August. September 1st starts and Labor Day is sort of like, you know, the quintessential beginning of fall. But we're going to have one last hurrah before we put away our white pants and our white shoes. And that is with my favorite gazpacho recipe. So this is going to be a video where I make it and share with you about it. And hopefully I don't cut myself on TV. So, you know, pray for me, y'all. Um, let's talk about, before we get into that, um, I do have a candle burning and it's Yankee Candles Flowers in the Sun. This is a quintessential Yankee Candle floral fragrance. I'm loving it. It is very light and soft. Um, but it is a, it's a bright white floral and uh, I'm waiting for it to pull out here. Y'all know that Yankees take a while and I have, with this one, practiced good Yankee Candle Hygiene and trim the wicks, which keep it, you know, from pulling out even, well, any faster. And so, you know, there's a, you can cheat and not trim those carbon um, balls or that little mushroom cap off the top, but it causes a really tall flame and it gets litter in the thing. So recommend to trim your wicks. Um, anyway, y'all know all about that. What have we got? So this is an Ina Garden or um, uh, Barefoot Contessa recipe. You can find it on the internet. I'll link to it in the description below. And I think A, it's easy. B, it's delicious. And did I mention it was easy? And so if you have a garden, this makes use of a lot of common garden vegetables and they're easy to find any time of year. Um, you know, it's a quintessential classic gazpacho with a hidden secret that um, really um, makes it easy. I've said easy and a lot, so I like an easy recipe. Easy peasy. Okay, so what have we got? So we have um, four tomatoes, and you can use Roma tomatoes or um, these regular, these were vine ripened tomatoes. I got those that were attached to the vine at the grocery store, but. Um, about four Roma sized tomatoes, a couple of large, like larger tomatoes from your garden. That's about as much tomato as you need. Sort of look at it there. Um, you don't want to like go overboard and get like four huge tomatoes. You want to have like um, four medium sized tomatoes, two regular sized uh, bell peppers, and one uh, hmm, uh, a hothouse cucumber. So if you don't have hothouse cucumbers, you can use regular cucumbers. Just try to get about the same volume as this hothouse uh, cucumber. We're going uh, to not peel it. We're going to use it just like this, but we're going to seed it in just a minute. One red onion. We're going to use three cloves of garlic, and we're going to use salt and pepper. We're also going to use uh, white wine vinegar, and I found that red wine vinegar also adds a nice touch, and we're going to use some nice olive oil. And make noise with our bowls. So extra virgin olive oil, you're going to need a fourth of a cup of that. And you're going to need V8, about three cups of V8 to make this recipe. I made this recipe just a couple of weeks ago. V8 will stay in the refrigerator um, up to 14 days so I can use it again. Now, I'm going to make it in this large metal bowl, but you can make it in any bowl. And I like to use a deeper bowl because I'm going to use my immersion blender down in the bowl. I have this bowl here to catch my scraps. I think I was watching Rachel Ray or something and she had what she calls like a trash bowl out on the counter and that way you don't have to move from the counter and it makes your steps more efficient in the kitchen. So one bowl is going to be a trash bowl. You just fill it up with your peels and other things and then at the end as you're cleaning up you can just dump it all out one time. Smart lady. And I have used this Hamilton Beach immersion blender for years and years and so I'll open it up. I use it primarily for two recipes. I use it for, ooh, I need to clean in the inside, but I use it for this gazpacho recipe, and I use it for a sweet potato, like a peanut butter sweet potato black bean recipe that's like this African soup that I love for fall. So I will bring that recipe to you too. I could eat it every day. It's yummy. 
It's garlic and warm. It's perfect for fall days. So I'll bring that one to you too. So we'll use the Immersion Blender. If you all have a fancy Immersion Blender, you can use that too. But I like the control that the Immersion Blender offers versus a food processor. I feel like I can get a more precise um, and accurate chop on the food with the Immersion Blender for this particular recipe. Plus it's fun. You can get out some aggression. You'll see. Um, before we get into all that, I have my recipe on the phone, but I wanted to show you all a couple things that came in the mail recently. So, Best of Fall Beauty from Neiman Marcus. So, y'all, there's a Neiman Marcus near us. Listen, high-end cosmetics and home fragrance. This is where I get my Nest candles at Neiman's and also at, um, uh, Nordstrom so it's fun to just get on their mailing list uh, every Christmas I buy one one Tom Ford or um, other high-end uh, fragrance there sometimes it is um, a vent like a Ventus we got one year um, but they have like high-end Creed cologne and perfume just all sorts of fun things it's just fun it's a fun look book Plus, they have some samples in here. So try to get your name on the Neiman Marcus. Um, it's fun to dream. It, there's um, uh, creme de Poe is in here. And I was looking at the creme de Poe price. Let me see if I can find it. Um, I mean, just talk about like elegance. Ah, where did it go? Dior, all the big names, all the big names are in here. I think it was in the back. I'll fast forward with this if I can't find it pretty quickly. There's the Lancome, da da da, La Mer, Revive. Revive was started by a person who did research on burn victims, so you know they can bring burn victim skin back. They, oh, here it is. This Skin Smoother by Creme de Peau, it, or Clay de Peau, I don't know why I'm keep calling Creme de Peau. Clay de Peau is 0.71 ounces. It's three hundred and ten dollars. I mean, that might have well like gotten that from the moon. It must be anyway. Phew, that's expensive. And then my friend invited me to an end of summer party, and it's a little pool party. And look, there's like these synchronized swimmers in high heels um, in the pool. I thought that was so cute. That came in the mail, y'all. Send your friends postcards and things in the mail. All right, so we're gonna get started. I like to start by oh, and I have like some measuring cups and a spoon out so that I can do my um, flower show. I like to start out with the tomatoes and I'm just going to take the core out of the tomato here and get them ready and I just do it a little bit like that and so I'm just I'm, I'm probably not using like great knife technique if people y'all don't judge me in the comments if you see you're like oh John you're doing it it's not safe or whatever um don't judge me see I just drop those little bits into my Rachel Ray trash bowl and it was so easy. Um, you know, I'm a I'm left-handed, so it's hard for me to use a knife right-handed. But I do. Um, how many of you are left or right-handed? Do you use? You know, are you ambidextrous? Like I cut scissors with my right hand. Yeah, and I bat right-handed. I crochet right-handed because my grandmother was right-handed. That's how she taught me. And so I use a knife right-handed. And then I'm just going to give these um, tomatoes like a, a, I would call it like, I would say rough chop, but really I'm just chunking them. I'll show you on the camera in just a second. I know that the, so I just sort of quartered the pieces. They're in this size pieces and I'm dropping them in the bowl. I'm trying to use good knife skills so that um, y'all don't call me out and that I don't have to have a band-aid. But these, um, the, the pieces can be, um, you know, they don't have to be ginormous, um, but you're going to want to get them so that the edge of the immersion blender blade will grab them and it won't be a big deal. Um, the Immersion Blender is a lot of fun. If you don't have an Immersion Blender, I'll put a link to one below. I bought that one at like Walmart or Target at some point and it's held up really well. But again, I don't use it a whole lot. Um, I primarily use it for this recipe and I use it for that um, sweet potato uh, soup recipe. That sweet potato uh, soup recipe, the African inspired one, I uh, several years ago went to yoga teacher training and um, I actually 
became certified to be a yoga teacher, it was one of the ways to just like deepen my yoga practice, which has completely fallen off, by the way. Um, but uh, it was really great because when you're doing yoga teacher practice, you're, you are practicing all the time, and it was um, a lot of fun. And then I taught for a while. I just taught one class that was a donation class here in Charlotte at a, a local studio that was um, based in the Iyengar tradition, and that's what I had um, grown up in, sort of this Bonnie Bainbridge Cohen mind body centering sort of uh, yoga. And so the there was we had a potluck. And one of the teachers brought that soup and it knocked my socks off. So I'll be sure to share that with you all this fall. So, um, I grew up like my family didn't, I mean, we had farm, uh, we had like my grandparents had a farm and not really a farm, but like a garden. And, um, we grew up with summertime gardening foods, but, um, you know, gazpacho was not something that I had at my house growing up. It's really something that I came into as an adult. So gazpacho, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, is a cold soup. It is um, really popular in Spain and it is so refreshing. Um, and so I just chopped around the outside of that um, bell pepper and now I'm going to chop it into pieces that are about this size. Anyway, so it's Spanish influence, um, but it is like a salad in a glass that essentially has been like um, blended up. It is a great, refreshing uh, summertime soup, and it um, I, it has this tang and tartness from the uh, white wine vinegar that just makes it so, so yummy and refreshing. I'm gonna serve this tomorrow, so I'm preparing it a day ahead so that all of the flavors have time to settle. You could do it the same day. I wouldn't recommend, you know, if you can avoid doing it the same day, that would be great. Um, and give it overnight in the refrigerator for all the flavors to meld together. It just really improves the flavors if you're able to give it overnight. And I'm gonna cut off some more of this bell pepper. Um, because those flavors have time to um, just blend together, it makes it so yummy, um, but give it a few hours. So you could probably do it the same day if you made it in the morning. Um, but I would try to give it at least overnight in the, in the refrigerator. And you're gonna be running around, trying to have dinner ready, your guests are coming over, you're gonna be worried about something else. Um, and so don't worry about, this is a great make ahead meal, don't worry about um, making the meal the day of, Make this before, then you can toast little French bread rounds, put some olive oil or butter on them, uh, and toast them in the oven, and those will be like beautiful little crostini little pieces of bread to have with the gazpacho. We're going to um, grill shrimp with um, just some uh, olive oil and salt and pepper. We're gonna grill shrimp with this, and that makes for a fantastic meal. You. Um, it plates up so well because you put the gazpacho in a bowl and then you have the shrimp on kebabs, like on skewers next to it, and it just, it plates up beautifully. Okay, so now we're gonna use this impressive uh, cucumber here. I'm gonna cut off the ends uh, so that uh, I get these nice flat pieces. And then to make it more manageable, I'm gonna cut it in half. And then I'm gonna slice it in half lengthwise and not cut off my fingers. And now I'm going to seed the cucumber. Basically I'm using a regular kitchen spoon and there are seeds in the middle and I'm just going to draw the, um, oh it smells so good and refreshing. I'm gonna draw the spoon down the length of, I might turn it to get the other end. I'm gonna draw the spoon down the length to get all the seeds out. Now this cucumber doesn't have a ton of like fully formed seeds like the um, larger regular garden cucumbers do and that's one of the reasons you may want to consider using these English uh, cucumbers these longer ones because the seeds are like less developed you could probably just chop this looking at the seeds you could probably just chop this and put it into the soup itself but the recipe said for it to be seeded and seeded it will be um, and so we're gonna and now this so these make fun little boats for pimento cheese too. So if you're a pimento cheese or a um, 
fan. You can make little boats and then you could slice them up like sushi. All right, so that is the last of the cucumbers. And now I'm just going to, here, I don't need this again. We'll put it in the sink. I'm gonna slice it lengthwise and then I'm gonna just chop those into pieces, put them in there. You can tell it's easy. Quick prep, quick prep. Chop, chop, chop. Put this in. Slice with your fingers. Chop, chop, chop. Put it in. Slice. Chop, 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 chop. Put it in. Ta-da! And then um, with this, this is an onion, duh. And so with this onion, I'm going to um, chop off this bottom part. I, somebody at one point told me how to like chop onions and I don't remember what they told me. Um, but I chop off that other part and I leave the root part intact. And then I'm gonna actually chop it down the middle to make it a little bit more manageable. Y'all, I use a green cutting board for vegetables and I use a red cutting board for meat. And so red meat, red cutting board, blood, red. You get it? And so I'm actually gonna peel off this outer part of the onion. And then I'm going to take the onion and I'm gonna to go toward the root end, but I'm not going all the way back. And then what that does is gives me those little pieces and then I'm just going to chop it this way. And that way I just leave this little end. Woo! Of course it's gonna make me tear, y'all gonna make me cry. Um, and then I'll show you again, oh I need to peel this off. So peel off the outer one. If you have a better way of peeling onions, let me know. But I was shown this way at some point, I've just used it. Um, so I'm going to not cut all the way to the root end, but get close. So I'm going to go in and come down, go in and come down, go in and come down, go in and come down. And this keeps your onion all together. Whew, I'm really, I am really tearing up. But this is just a rough chop. I'm not dicing the onions because um, they're going to uh, get the whoo, treatment from the um, Immersion blender. All right, it calls for three cloves of garlic and I'm gonna go ahead and get those done so I get all the chopping out of the way. And the three, you hear my dog, um, he's exploring. He got out of his bed and he took his blanket away. And he's trying to figure out how to get his blanket back in there. Here, so you get in your crate or get in your basket, there you go. He likes to get all the way under the covers and curl in. He's a Chawini. And um, let me wash my hands because I just touched his blanket. Um, he's a Chawini and I have my towel somewhere. There it is. <clears throat> and so he has a little naked belly. He doesn't have fur on his belly and he gets cold. And so he likes to curl up under the blanket. So with um, the garlic, I'm just going to take off the bottom end. So. There's like a pointy end where it would root and sprout and then there's a bottom end. And um, I was in a cooking class recently and they were like, don't mash your garlic unless the recipe calls for it to be mashed. And I was like, well, how do you get the, the um, peel off the garlic? And they, I don't know, they didn't have a good answer. But anyway, I'm just gonna like bang it. Ooh, that one really smashed. Bang it a little bit. And then the peel comes off pretty easily. So. They were like, you know, it just ends up being smashed. And I was like, well, after you chop it, it's going to be smashed too. So anyway, there are lots of different ways to roam. And this is one of them. So I'm going to unwrap my garlic here. Get its little jacket off. And then I'm just going to get this started by chopping the garlic like this. Now, the garlic does not go in with the rest of these vegetables and I'm gonna sort of chop it by rocking my blade back and forth. It, you put the garlic in 
after the soup has been blended um, together. And so that helps the garlic really sing out. This becomes like a very garlic facing or fronted um, meal because three cloves of garlic, I've still got a little huh, from the um, uh, onions and it's on this cutting board. So three cloves of garlic is a good amount. And so you wanna have a little bit of garlic like in every bite. And so I'm going to just chop this pretty finely. It gets stuck on your um, knife. I'm gonna bring it down, put it back in a pile, and then just bring my knife back on top of it. Chop, 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 chop. I'm trying to um, hold one end of the knife sort of still with my hand on my right side, I guess, your left side, and then I'm chopping it by moving the blade across the field of garlic. I'm gonna do it one more time here. You don't want pieces that people are like, oh, that's a big chunk of garlic. And once it gets into gazpacho, it will get blended in pretty well. The flavors will still be there, but you just don't want to like visually be able to see it, I think. Okay, so that's our little pile of garlic. We'll have that there. Let me rinse my fingers. You know, after you um, chop garlic, if you touch like your phone or anything, it will smell like garlic for days. And while garlic smells great to eat, it's not great to have your phone in a meeting and be like, oh my God, what does that smell? And it's your phone. It's your garlicky phone. Okay. All right, so now we get the fun part and get to use our immersion blender. And I'm gonna take it apart or take it out of this little container. It comes with a, like a whisk portion and so I take this part off. I think there were egg like beaters and stuff that went with it too. And it just like, I'm worried about not seeing you in the camera. It just um, slides on like this. Um, I have a little outlet here under the counter. It's so perfect. I feel like I'm in a like television studio. Okay, so here is the uh, vegetables that I've chopped up. And I might like, let me use a spoon and just mix them around <coughs> so that we don't, so that they're kind of blended all through. So these are full of water and vegetable juices. And so especially the tomatoes, in a minute, it will become very liquefied, but it'll take a minute. And I generally, um, so the immersion blender, ha this one has a high and a low setting. Uh, I'm pretty cautious. The recipe says do not over process, do not over blend. And so it does take a minute for it to get started. And if you're like, gosh, John, I'm making ketchup here. Um, uh, just keep with it and it will become more liquefied. And then once you add the salt in in a little bit, it will bring out even more of the juices and turn into soup. So this is a time, like if you have, let me find an apron. I should have been wearing this all along, but especially if you have on a nice shirt, come on apron. And I've got it on backwards. You can kiss the cook. Um, so we got our apron on. I'm getting dressed for you. Um, you want to protect yourself <laughs> and stop the immersion blender before you bring it out of the bowl because otherwise your whole kitchen will be covered in gazpacho. So I'm just going to get started and just put it in and press it down and let the blade do the work. It will look like you're smashing the vegetable for a little bit, but in a minute or two, it will all mix. Basically, I'm kind of aiming for a vegetable and then trying to get it cut up and then moving on. I'm working my way around the bowl to get the vegetable 
started to be blended. And you might be able to see it's beginning to blend some, some are still whole pieces, and so I'm going to continue my work. This is so fun. Like after a day of work, this is a great way to reduce stress. You can imagine that you're just blending your problems away. Okay, so this, I don't, hopefully you can see it's become pretty liquidy and it's to the point now that I can really use um, the immersion blender to blend. And so this is a place where you want to keep your immersion blender moving so you don't over blend and cause the pieces to be too terribly small. place where you learn some strategy so the immersion blender will spit back on you if you turn it like this and so you definitely want to keep it up and down and it will suck itself to the bottom of the um, bowl and so you just want to like learn your blender going to take this end off. I'm going to give it a rinse right now. With just warm water because that way nothing will get stuck on. And then I'll show you this is like a light pink, but there's small pieces in in there and it's still pretty clumpy. Okay? This is a good mix. I probably did overblend it just slightly, but it's okay. Now, we're going to add the secret ingredient, shake up your V8. And so this has been in the refrigerator and it's okay if yours hasn't because it's going to go back into warm V8 or regular V8. You can use the reduced sodium V8 if you're watching your sodium intake. I just use the original V8. And we're going to do three cups of V8. One, ah, ah, ah. Two, ah, ah, ah. And I think there's three in here, we'll see. Three. There's a little bit left in the bottom. I'm just going to add that in there too. Alright, so I'll rinse this in just a minute and then it will be able to be recycled. I'm going to stir this up. Stir, stir, stir. You can sing a song like that too. Yum. And so that V8 really adds a lot of liquid to um, the body of your gazpacho. And now we're going to add, and I'm, let me make double sure, it says one fourth cup white wine vinegar and one fourth cup olive oil. I was second guessing myself about the ingredients. And so one fourth cup white wine vinegar. There we go. And a fourth of a cup. of olive oil. Now, when you pour a fourth of a cup of olive oil into a recipe, you're like, gosh, that feels like a lot of fat and a lot of olive oil. Well, like if you think about it from the proportions and, and the amount per serving, it's really not that much. Um, so, especially when you begin to look at how much fat and oil 
are in things like salad dressing and other um, food like french fries you know other foods that you might eat readily and not even think about it or not even know that the um, oil or fat is in there and so I'm gently stirring this together without sprinkled our garlic around in the bowl and I have this kosher salt and I'm going to use a large pinch that I think is about a half of a tablespoon you can always add more salt um, and so I try to not, not go like too crazy at first with the salt and then I can always add more, but um, it makes it yummy and so tasty. And then, maybe a teaspoon of freshly ground pepper. And I'm just gonna estimate this. So I'm gonna keep grinding until I feel like I have about a tea, half a teaspoon to a teaspoon. Again, with pepper, you can always add more or you can season it to one spot and then your guests can season it for themselves. Okay. So I'm gonna incorporate that into our gazpacho so the flavors blend in. Y'all, and that's all she wrote. Some people like have gazpacho recipes that add bread. Not even gonna worry about that. This one is a fresh, summery, delicious tomato-based soup that will delight your guests. It's perfect for any time during the summer or if you're having warm weather or you're on vacation somewhere warm in the winter time, what a great treat. So, <laughs> taste as you go, a Julia Child trick. Yum, okay. These flavors are great. Woo, got a little piece of garlic. Flavors are great. They're gonna be even better tomorrow evening when I get to serve it to my guests for dinner. I'm gonna put saran on top and then I'll be able to plate this up and put it in a bowl so it doesn't come out looking like um, an industrial kitchen in this bowl. So now it's my turn to clean up. Hopefully you all have a great recipe. I hope you've enjoyed our first recipe of peppermint and tobacco. Thanks everybody for watching. We'll see you next time.